Imagine this thing chewing through you. This has always been a controversial subject, but as we're in summer now here in Australia, the frequency of shark attacks is increasing. It was the second day in a row swimmers were forced out of the water. Human remains were discovered washed up on shore. Now I'm no actual expert, but I have been studying sharks for many years since I was a kid. We hear occasionally on the news about great white attacks on the Gold Coast and of course down the east coast of Australia. The great white shark. It's just a fierce, fierce creature. Responsible for five fatalities in just 10 months. Two people were totally consumed, two were bitten in half, and the fifth one was so severely mauled. Great whites aren't the only shark that causes problems with man. In fact, there are many bull sharks in the rivers. But in this case, I'm primarily talking about when you swim at the beach. And with the problem of shark attacks comes the knee-jerk reactions to what is the best mechanism of finding a fine balance between people that want to swim in the ocean, particularly beaches, and shark attacks. There's many such things, uh, drum lines, etc. In the old days, they'd just go out and kill the shark. Great whites are a protected species in Australia, so that's not even on the cards. And probably nor should it be, because sharks are a source of cleaning the ocean of sick fish, etc. And most attacks, they don't actually go out to eat people. They, of course, mistake them for potential food. And sharks, being sharks, don't have hands, so they'll either give you a bump uh, or often a little taste sample test, like, ang. Unfortunately, they're so damn big and sharp, those teeth will just rip through you, and most people die of loss of blood or loss of a limb. I found it most disturbing, however, when I spoke to a fisherman a few years ago that goes out every night from the Gold Coast. And he said it's almost every night there are so many great whites, some even the smaller ones jump into the boat. And uh, that's why they carry a club. So perhaps it's gone to the extreme of overprotection formulate your own opinion on that. In Australia, and it may not really make sense, each state is responsible for its own shark control. So basically, what do you think is the best solution? These days, apparently, they also have intelligent drum lines, for which I understand signal when there's a shark caught in the net, and they can go out and tag and release the shark and track its movements. So that's not a bad idea. They also have drones controlling many beaches now. Now I know most people say, well, it is the shark's domain, and that is true. Um, look, the day I'm shopping at Woolworths and the Great White comes in and harasses me, I may change my opinion. Once upon a time we used to have shark nets off the coast. Uh, a lot of those have been removed because of some court order that pertained only to the Great Barrier Reef. And the Queensland Government, knee-jerk reaction, not wanting to be fined, removed all the nets. Now nets have always had the downside too. They tend to catch more uh, good marine life, for want of a better word, than they catch sharks. And sadly a lot of things drowned in those nets, uh, like dolphins and turtles. It's not an easy one, it never has been. That's why I'm asking for your solutions, if you can come up with any abstract ideas. Uh, tracking is a good idea, means they catch and release the sharks, but yeah, uh, everything is fallible, so I guess there's no saying that one of the tracking devices is fitted to a large shark, be it a tiger shark or a great white, could fail. Not an easy solution, let me know what you think. Even though I have swum in the ocean many times in my life, it's not something I'm that keen to do because of that fear. And I know statistically, you're at much, much greater risk of being run over by a car or be in a serious car accident. That's a given. But the fear factor's still there. 
And having been old enough to witness the original Jaws when it came out at the cinema, uh, yeah, I know the amount of people that used to swim in the ocean after that declined, and I was one of those. However, it is what it is, people will always want to have a swim. So, what do you think is the best solution? Then again, you've probably seen documentaries like I have where they've been chumming, which is usually a mixture of meat and blood, for days sometimes, and not one shark appeared. So, it's not a case of being able to predict the movements of these creatures. A lot of people don't know this, but shark skin actually feels similar to sandpaper. Because it's made up of tiny teeth-like structures called placoid scales, also known as dermal denticles. These scales point towards the tail and help reduce friction from surrounding water when the shark swims. So you could in fact incur injuries from a shark swimming too close to you. Now this wouldn't be fatal of course, in all likelihood, but it would certainly make you bleed and given the shark's propensity towards blood, Probably not a good idea to even be brushed up by a shark. Early documentation reveals the use of shark skin, including the skin of rays as sandpaper, goes back to the British Empire in the mid 18th century. Shark skin was apparently only used to finish very fine work. Uh, that's actually a replica of a fossil tooth of a Carcarales megalodon. Uh, here's a real one fossilised tooth of millions of years ago. And another couple here of prehistoric sharks too. Originally they thought the Great White was the modern day version of the Megalodon, but science now assumes that they are actually different species. And the Megalodon actually had a bigger ancestor. That's not talked about much, but you can research that because it's a bit of a mouthful to remember those names. The Great White is known as Carcharodon Carcaris. That's all I can remember. I know when I went to Perth years ago, a beautiful place, I went to Cottesloe Beach. Uh, there was two or three Great White attacks, some fatalities, I'm not sure if all three were now. And I wanted to check it out, so I went to the edge and I could see from the edge of the beach it dropped straight down. Uh, I think it's right on the continental shelf so uh, you know mere feet from the very edge of the sand it's very very deep. So it's basically a highway for all fish including big sharks. I put my toe in and that's enough to say I was there. <laughs> a bit like when I went to Darwin and um, <clears throat> yeah found a beach put my toe in right I've touched this water too and quickly went the other direction because I know there's a lot of crocodiles there. So what do you think is the best solution? Drop your opinions below. Cheers. <laughs>